Welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy New Year. Greetings and salutations, everyone. Live from NCCE is thrilled to be back here today to share with you the amazing Kiki Protzman. She is, of course, first and foremost, a computer science educator who champions responsible computing and equity in computer science employment and education. She's an amazing author. We'll give her some of it. We'll give you some of her titles that are available on Amazon. She's also a, a, an award winner for in many different awards, including the Register Guard Game Changer Award, the Silver Stevie Female Innovator of the Year Award, and the Engage for Good Golden Halo Award. That's a mouthful, Kiki. Welcome to live from NCCE. Thank you so very, very, very much. I heard that Microsoft May Code Arcade is taking over your blog. We want to know why. Yes, well, I uh, have found a new love. So I, <laughs> as you know, I started off with code.org and I explored a lot of different computer science uh, educational programs and things while I was doing that. And I found so many things that I enjoyed. Uh, one of them though caught my eye and just kept growing and growing and growing. And that was Microsoft Make Code. And at the time, I didn't know you could do it if you didn't have a Microsoft computer. So uh, later I realized that it worked on all computers and I started using it a little more on my Mac and then using it for Lego and then using it for Microbit. And uh, they had a position come up and say, hey, we wanna bring an educator on. And I said, me, me, me. <laughs> so uh, here I am. And here you are and take it away. We can't wait to learn from you. Thanks. Well, I'm excited to share some stuff. So we are a fairly young company still. We haven't been around all that much. And the, the product that I work on is called Arcade, and it is even newer still. So uh, some of the things that we've been noticing is that people don't know all the things they can do with it. So I am here today to try and show y'all some of the things that we can do. I want to say a quick hi to everybody watching, and I see some people starting to leave comments. Feel free to say who you are, uh, if you're a teacher, if you're not a teacher, the age of your students, and if you have anything that you want to share with me about what you like or what you don't like, that would be fantastic. All right, hey, Noreen. All right, we're going to hope that this slideshow works well with me today. So no, we're going to have the same issue we had earlier. Fortunately, I'm not going to rely on the slides all that much. I might have to stop sharing and then share again in a little bit. Oh, it caught up with me. Wonderful. Excellent. So a couple pieces of news for everybody. Uh, you may have read my blog or watched my videos on Kiki vs. IT, uh, Kiki versus IT. And you might have noticed I have kind of been absent. I haven't been doing a whole lot of videos. I have not been writing a whole lot of blogs. And that's because all of my heart and soul has been poured into make code over this last a little more than a year now. So uh, what I've done is I've gone ahead and started a blog literally just today called Kiki's Corner. It's on Medium. And it is exclusively going to be tips and tricks for make code. So that way it's all out in the open. I am in love with make code right now. It is my main squeeze and it is what I will be writing about mostly when I have other more generic things or things that I, um, uh, I'm looking at from another angle. I might put those back on Kiki VSIT, but it's probably gonna be sleeping for a little while. And the next exciting piece of news is that we are starting a Twitter chat, basically a make code office hours on Tuesdays at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern uh, with the hashtag MakeCodeChat. So all week long, you can tweet your questions with the MakeCodeChat hashtag. And on Tuesdays, we'll come on and we will answer some questions live or we will tell you tips and tricks uh, during that, that period from 5 to 5.30, 8 to 8.30 Eastern time. Okay, so and again, it looks like this might take just a second to catch up, but I'm going to talk anyway because I have a lot to cover. I don't know if I'm going to get to it all. Uh, also, actually, let me go back to the beginning of these slides because do, do, I put a link to the slides right here, aka.ms slash make code pro tips. And you can do that 
title case like I have it, or you can do it all lowercase, it doesn't care. But if you want to have these slides to look over after the fact, then you can have all the tips at your fingertips and uh, hopefully they will do very well for you. I don't think I'll get to everything today, but we'll make do. Okay, I'm not gonna go into a full history of arcade games. I'm hoping most of the people watching today have played some arcade games, are familiar with the great big arcade cabinet and the, the low bit graphics and how quickly everything moves, usually very simple mechanics. This makes arcade games a wonderful medium for teaching kids how to code. The expectations are fairly low as far as graphic interfaces concerned, and uh, the mechanics are fairly straightforward. That means there's not a whole lot of extra stuff students need to learn in order to get started. In fact, you can have a really fun to play arcade game in Make Code Arcade with just three blocks. So we, we have tutorials that even walk you through making a, a greeting card and it's one or two blocks. So it's very, very simple as far as block-based programming is concerned. Thank you, Jason. Classic arcade games are amazing. All right, so now I have a minute if you guys wouldn't mind uh, filling up the chat with some of your favorite arcade games, partially to make sure you're paying attention partially to give us a list so that we know what kind of games we'll hit when we uh, put out new skill maps. So some of the favorites, Pac-Man, there we go, uh, Space Invaders, and then the one on the end you can't see quite yet is Donkey Kong. And uh, we actually have a full-size arcade cabinet in our office in Seattle that our team made. <laughs> it's a full full-size arcade cabinet powered by a little, um, oh, I don't think I have it here, but by, a, oh, ooh, that's a loud sound, by a little device that you can save your arcade games on. And I don't know what I did with it. Um, but if I, oh yeah, I found it. So one of these little devices and you can play your games right on those. These are like 30 bucks, so much fun. All right. So you can make your own video games just by dragging and dropping blocks. Now, if you want to follow along with me, you can open your browser. Otherwise, you can just watch me. That's totally cool. Um, I'm loving seeing all these video games. Atari, Pong. I'm actually working on a Pong skill map. Um, Centipede, Defender. Uh, we have um, Galaga, a Galaga clone in Arcade. So I'm gonna swap over here. And again, it might take a minute for the screen to catch up with me. And I'll show you, if you go to arcade.makecode.com, again, the tab at the top doesn't look like it's caught up with me yet. It should be there in a second. And then you'll see the arcade.makecode.com. This is all I'm seeing right now. So the rest of it is left over from the slides, I think. Okay, so we have the the starting page for Arcade. You have the ability to make a new project. And then we have some skill maps. The skill maps do extend a little further. This is so bizarre because you can see my mouse move. That's all right, it'll catch up. Okay, so we have all these skill maps and you can think of these as step-by-step -step tutorials to kind of teach you how to make different kinds of arcade games. You'll see in the middle there, we have a Sing 2 one. If there's any Sing 2 fans out in the audience, um, that one is fairly new. It's gonna stay until March. So March 1st, it has to leave. If you wanna play it, you can play that now. But these take you through and teach you how to make little arcade style games step by step. And that's fine, but that's not a big secret. A lot of people who use arcade know that we have skill maps and we have tutorials, but there are things that you might not know. Um, let me, oof, I don't really want to keep flipping back and forth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my slides so that I can see them in this window. And then I'm just going to have y'all focus on the window that you can see right now. And I will just, uh, explain to you some of the things that we're going to take a look at. So, um, creating a new project. 
Creating a new project is simple. You click on the new project button right here. And then it's going to ask you for a name. It likes it when you give it a unique name so you don't get your projects all mixed up. But we'll call this sample project. And you'll probably see that there's a couple smiley faces up here to let you know that's a really great, great name. And when you start, you can choose whether you want the option to do blocks JavaScript and Python, Python only, JavaScript only. Let's go ahead and leave it blocks JavaScript and Python. That way we can flip back and forth. All right, so we've got that. And now you see we've got our, our uh, game console. We have our toolbox with all the tools in it, and we have our workspace. And this might look a little familiar. There are other block-based coding elements that have this. But we have this really cool ability to take some code that you drop in with a block, uh, let's go ahead and choose a doc here. And then you can flip over to JavaScript and you can actually see how that renders in JavaScript. So this is what it looks like when, um, let's see, there we go. That's what it looks like when it's written in JavaScript. We have this fun little way of uh, writing our sprites out in it's not really hexadecimal, it's hexadecimal-ish, uh, so that you can actually copy and paste this using text-based programs. So, for example, when lots of kids want to code together, you can sw switch over to JavaScript, you can copy all of this, and then you can paste it in a doc that everybody can access, and someone else can then grab it, pull it into their pro project, and then build off of it. So if you have one person who wants to be the artist and do all the sprites, they can just paste all those sprites into a doc and then someone can come get them and then paste them back into the uh, project. So let's start talking about some tips here. Let's see, I don't wanna hide the comments just in case we have people who wanna know more about stuff, but all right. So one of the tips that we have is the right click. So when you're in the toolbox, you can right click on a block to find out more about what it does. Once that block is in your workspace, you can right click on it and you have all sorts of cool options like duplicating it, adding a comment, like a code comment to your block. You can delete it so you can pop just that one block out by deleting it and drag it over. You have the help still. And then you can create another get my sprite block. So you heard me talk about deleting it. And this is one of the things I think people are frustrated with when it comes to block based coding. So let's do let's put a couple of blocks around this. We have an empty background here. Let's go ahead and put a background image in. So we're going to put this duck on a pond. Let's put a duck on a pond. Great. Duck is on a pond. And now let's go ahead and let ourselves move the duck around. So we are going to want a move my sprite with buttons. And now we can move the duck around. And as you can see, after we put a block in, it goes gray, thinks for a minute, loads the new game. And then we can come over here and we can play our game fairly immediately. You might be kind of used to being able to do something like that with some of the other things out there. Um, but You'll also notice that we have kind of this on start, which just means straight away you can do it. And then we have all these other buttons that you can take advantage of too, like the arrow keys and the AB. Before I get to those, because I have more tips and tricks to tell you about there, uh, I want to talk about popping this out. So um, before I said that you could just hit delete block and it would take it out for you. I'm going to hit control Z really quick to undo that. And I'll show you that uh, without it, a lot of people get frustrated by um, the bottom block is attached to it. So if you wanted to take it out, the bottom block is going to come out with it. So clicking right click to delete it will stop you from having to take this out, move this back in. And that gets more annoying when you've got lots and lots of blocks that you're dealing with. But there is another tip 
that I want to tell you too. And if that annoys you, the having everything move around with that block in the middle, then this is going to be one of your favorite tips, just like it is with me. You can hold the command key or the option key or alt. And when you hold it, you can pull it right out from between the other blocks. So you can access something that's sandwiched in really easy just by holding down one of those option command control style keys uh, to get to your block. So that's fun. All right. I'm going to take a second and check and see if we have any uh, requests in the comments or any comments that I should address before. Kiki, moving. that is like magic to see. Right. I didn't know that move before. So I am thrilled to learn that. We did have someone ask, however, what grade level, what ages do you think this is appropriate for? We are actually just trying to narrow in on some. There was kind of a feeling up to about a year ago, maybe it was for everybody, uh, but really when you're an educator, you know not everything is for everybody. Um, we write a lot of our tutorials for middle schoolers, sixth, mm -hmm. seventh, eighth grade, uh, but we think that the interface itself is good all the way down to probably about third grade. We're working on, because it does require a good grasp of reading and some understanding of what you're reading. Um, we've played around with something we like to call Make Code Junior, which is a little more pictorial, a little less verbal. Um, but we have not dove into that yet because we really are trying to focus on that middle school grade level um, until we get until we're happy with where it is and then we can branch out a little bit more. Yeah, nice. I teach fifth grade and I got to tell you, I've got even a couple of my students are, are watching you right now. So we're, ah, we're pretty excited. That's wonderful. Well, have them tweet to me and or tweet to me on their behalf and uh, we'll be happy to give them challenges and all sorts of fun things. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. And that's it for the questions for right now. So show us more. Okay. Let's, let's dig in a little bit deeper. So we have this image here. And I told you how you could copy and paste the image from the, the JavaScript, but you can actually access it in another way too. So if you click on the image, it's gonna take you into the image editor and you can hit control or command A and copy and you won't see a copy anywhere here. That's something I hope we remedy very soon for iPad, tablets, mobile. Um, but for now, if you're on a keyboard, you can command C and then you can take what you copied and you can command V and paste it. And trust me, when you normally do this, the whole thing shows up. It's not, I, I don't know if you're seeing what I'm seeing on the screen, but what I'm seeing on the screen is only about half my screen instantly refreshes and then the other half takes a little while, but uh, there we go. So yeah, when you paste it in, the entire image will paste in. And so it acts like you're copying the image, even though behind the scenes, it's still that kind of faux hexadecimal thing going on there. So we have this image editor under assets up here, and that lets you be able to create new images to use in your project. It lets you create new tile maps, all sorts of things. And the fun thing about what I just showed you with that copy and paste, if you copy a tile map, and paste a tile map in, then you all the little tiles that were used to build it will paste in too. So for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, um, we have this tile map builder where we have all these different types of tiles you can use to kind of build your world. And if you go in and you, uh, let's see, let's do that. You build all these with tiles and then I'm going to uh, go up here and I'm going to grab my fill tool and go in here. So the little things I'm using to build are called tiles. And then this thing that I'm creating the world that all of it will live as the um, map for <laughs> is the tile map. Now, uh, sometimes you'll find that when you're editing, you want to switch back and forth between this paintbrush tool the eraser tool, the rectangle tool, the paint can. And you can do that using hotkeys on the keyboard. So instead of constantly coming back here to change things, 
you can, let's see, if I go to the P, I'm at the pencil. If I go to the E, I'm at the eraser. And I think, I can't remember what fill tool is, but it's in my slides. I just don't want to move them. Um, but you can do all of that using your hotkeys on your keyboard so that you can build and paint really quickly, especially if you're doing a lot of tiles or a lot of um, images or a really big image. So I'm going to click done here and I will come back out of there. And let's see, I talked about right click, popping out blocks, image hotkeys, toggling JavaScript back and forth, uh, copying code and images to paste into another project. Let's talk about uh, tidying up your code and preventing confusion. So right now, very simple project. I could just kind of have a duck that moves around, right? We do have under advanced, we have some extra things here. Uh, we have animation, which is a huge hit with the students. If you haven't played with animation yet, I definitely recommend it. And then we have functions and you can make functions to keep your code nice and tidy or whenever you're doing something um, that you wanna call over and over again at a different time. So a loop won't cut it, right? So we have do something here. I'm just gonna duplicate this a couple of times to pretend like we've been coding for a while and we have all these functions all over the place. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and add some on game updates and maybe a timed on game update. So this one will run every some number of milliseconds um, when the game is updating. So we'll put that over here. Let's go ahead and take this guy way over here somewhere. Let's take this one even further over because maybe we're just doing a lot of coding and getting stuff all over the place. Um, um, let's see, let's do something crazy and completely nonsensical, but super fast, like setting the background color a lot of times. So theoretically, you could end up with code that's really long, really messy and all over the place. Some of the things you can do using that right click feature I was telling you about are you can collapse your block so that it shrinks it down really low and you can stack them up and get them out of the way so that obviously there's nothing in here, but um, if you have lots of really long functions, you can just collapse them all up and have them really close together so that you can know where things are in case you want to access them easily. Again, I definitely recommend you name your functions something more useful than do something, do something to, and do something for, for some reason. Uh, but then we also have this right click on the desktop or the workspace that will let you format your code, which will bring everything kind of over into your workspace and try and put things in the most logical order that it can figure out based on the code that you have. That's helpful if you're like a, Jackson Pollock coder, right? Which I am. You tend to follow your nose and do what's what is there and what's what it feels right. And then you end up with code kind of everywhere splattered against the wall. And then the computer will help you clean that up a little bit. And then you can expand your blocks too and have it expand everything, um, collapse everything. And then that way you can just keep everything nice and tidy, move with it really easily. I'm gonna check that block real quick. And for the teachers out there, you can also right click and take a snapshot of your screen. And what that will do is it will capture all of the blocks without the background. So it's just basically a transparent PNG that you can have all of your blocks in case you wanna use them in a slide or you wanna print off a poster or something to that effect. So that is pretty cool. All right, oh, speaking of PNGs, saving things to PNGs, you'll notice we have a little save button down here. And when you save your project and click save as, it'll save your project to a PNG, which I know you can't tell right now because it doesn't say .png, but you can see some of my other things that I've saved say PNG down here. So you can save your file if you wanna take it to another computer. You can save it and then open the PNG up in another file. And just to give you an idea of what that looks like, I'll show you 
let's go ahead and hmm, let's go ahead and go into my skill map saves and we'll grab this project that is a PNG and I'm just going to drop it in here and there it's opened up my little project. It's got all of my assets that I saved in this project. They came in with it. I've got my code here and then it's all running. This is a little fly that you try and press space and capture the fly when it's over the frog. Oh, I'm so bad at this game. Anyway, we have a lot of games that are very simple to code and they are very challenging. That is one of them. Uh, so yes, you have all of that. Now, say you want a different way to share your game. You don't want to send a PNG to everyone you know. That's totally fine. You can click on the share link right here. I'm going to give it a second for the screen to repopulate so that you can see what I'm doing because it's all on this right hand. Uh, that was fun. So you can, you can click this record button and then you can record your own thumbnail to go with your game. And then that's what people will see. There we go. Let's stop that so it doesn't do that again. That's what people will see when uh, you send the game to them. And so you click publish. There we go. And it will give you a link that you can send to your friends, uh, a tweet or some sort of message that you can send to them. Different sets of code for embedding it. Uh, you can embed the code to your game, the editor itself, or you can embed just the simulator to play. And it also gives you a little QR code that you can scan and share with people. So that's super fun. And then you'll notice if you share using the URL, then when I pop that URL up in the, the address bar up there, you get a button here, let's wait for this side to catch up. This is the strangest thing. Let's just blame it on PowerPoint, shall we? All right, there we go. Uh, you get this little button to edit your code. And then that way, when you send your game to somebody and they're playing it, if they want to remix it, they can just by clicking edit code. And then they're back to the same thing that we had before with all of the assets and all of the code, just like we had by dragging our PNG in there. So that's something that is really, really handy and really, really fun to use. Uh, let's see, we covered dragging the PNG in, sharing the project, saving to device. So you'll see down here, oh, my favorite tip is the mute button. <laughs> You can imagine if your whole class is doing this, it could get very loud and very annoying. The mute button will help so that it doesn't replay every time they play the game. And while we're down here, before we pop down to the download button, there's also keyboard shortcuts for using the controller. So if your students are already familiar with keyboard-based games, you can use keyboard shortcuts to use the arrow keys or WASD, uh, space is the A button, enter is the B button to play your games. We are getting so short on time. I knew I wasn't going to get through everything, but just one last thing, um, this download. So you can click here. You can choose your hardware, what kind of a device you're downloading to. This is the game go, the same thing that I have over here. And you can download your game to it. You can take it with you and you can play it, which is tons and tons of fun. So the last things I didn't get to, more information is in the slides, uh, saving your game to GitHub and using extensions. So you, you, there is a little window here. You can sign in to save your progress to take it from computer to computer. But if you have a GitHub, GitHub account, if you're over 13 and you are, or you're interested in making one just to save your pro projects, you can access everything you need from the GitHub button down at the bottom uh, of the screen down here. So you can't see it because the Make Code Pro Tips is over it right now. There it is, that little GitHub button. So you can click on that and that will 
uh, ask you to sign in with your GitHub or it will walk you through making one so that you can share games and add all sorts of images, do all these kind of things using your own. And you can make extensions. So extensions are something we won't have time to cover. It is now uh, time, but <laughs> <laughs> but we're so fascinated. But they exist. So exciting. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing. And we've got the AKA MS Make Code Pro Tips shortcut down there. And of course, you can always follow Kiki on the Twitterverse. It's capital K-I-K-I lowercase v-s, uppercase i-t, Kiki yep. versus i-t. I don't think it's versus. I think you've harnessed the power of i-t. <laughs> we are incredibly impressed. We are so grateful that you were here to kick off the new year with us. Thank you so much. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you for um, joining us tonight. Of course, uh, the NCCE 2022 conference live has been postponed uh, and so we will let you know what's happening with that. But we will be back next month with Miss Charity Nix, and we'll be advertising that in a couple of weeks. And be sure you follow Kiki and go to her blog and her website at all the links. And thank you, Kiki, so much for being here tonight. And everyone else, thank you. Have a lovely thank rest you. of your evening and a relaxing weekend. Bye, everybody.